Good morning, hipsters. Happy Model Monday. Normally on Model Mondays, I wear really fancy dresses, but I thought that today I would change it up and wear a suit because why not? I like suits. I never get to wear suits. So this is my Model Monday outfit. I can't wait to see yours. Um, okay, hipsters. Today we are finishing up Owl at Home, which is so exciting, but also sad because I love reading this book. And today we're focused on character feelings. So if you're in my power where we do a lot of work with character feelings, right? We know that characters aren't always either happy or sad. There's a lot of things they could be feeling in between, like frustrated or lonely or jealous or concerned or curious. There's so many really awesome feelings words, Kipsters. Um, so when we're reading, I'm so artistic, guys. So when we're reading, we pay careful attention to what the character is thinking, saying, and doing so that we can figure out what they're feeling. So again, to figure out that character feeling, we take a look at what the character thinks, says, and does. So those are the three things that we're really going to focus on today to help identify some character feelings throughout our new chapter. Okay. Um, watch me reread part of chapter one of Owl at Home to identify what Owl is, thinks, says, and does so that we can help figure out how he's feeling. So remember back chapter one of Owl at Home, he lets Winter in and Winter kind of destroys his house. Okay, so we're going to reread a couple of these pages to really pay attention to those character feelings. Okay, Winter went into all the rooms of Owl's house. Soon everything was covered with snow. You must go, Winter, shouted Owl. Go away right now. The wind blew around and around. Then Winter rushed out and slammed the front door. Goodbye, called Owl, and do not come back. Wow. Okay, so first I'm thinking about what the character is thinking, right? So it doesn't tell me explicitly what Owl thinks on this page, but... I can kind of get some clues that Owl is thinking he really wants Winter to leave. Right? I can look at the picture, I can look at the words, and I'm getting some clues that Owl is, really wants Winter to leave. Um, I can figure out, though, what Owl is saying on these pages. He says, you must go, Winter. Go away right now. Goodbye and do not come back. So he's saying a lot of really forceful things. Right? And what is he doing on this page? Well, he's shouting. Um... And he's calling out to Winter, right? So those are what he's doing. He's shouting these words at Winter. And I know that when someone's shouting, it normally means that they're really feeling a strong emotion. And most likely, based on what he's saying on this page, he's feeling pretty angry and frustrated that Winter is destroying his house and will not leave, right? Because he says, goodbye and do not come back. Owl does not want Winter in his home. He's pretty angry and frustrated at what Winter was doing. So, Kipsters, do you see how I looked at what Owl thought, what he said, and what he did on that page in order to figure out how he was feeling? And did you notice I used words that weren't just happy or sad? Sometimes characters are happy or sad, but a lot of the times they're more complicated than that, right? They're frustrated, they're angry, they're full of emotions, right? Because even as people, we're full of emotions too. Okay, Kipsters, now we're going to read the final chapter, chapter five of Owl at Home. And let me just say, this is my favorite chapter of the whole entire book. Okay, your first job, your only job right now, Kipsters, while I read it the first time is just to listen. Okay, just enjoy this really, I think it's kind of funny. It's a funny chapter, okay? Owl has kind of a misunderstanding and we need to figure out what it is to help him solve his problem. Remember, we talked about problems last week. Okay. Owl and the Moon. One night, Owl went down to the seashore. He sat on a large rock and looked out at the waves. Everything was dark. Then a small tip of the moon came up over the edge of the sea. Owl watched the moon. It climbed higher and higher into the sky. Soon the whole round moon was shining. Owl sat on the rock and looked up at the moon for a long time. If I am looking at you, moon, then you must be looking back at me. 
we must be very good friends. The moon did not answer, but Owl said, I will come back and see you again, moon, but now I must go home. Owl walked down the path. He looked up at the sky. The moon was still there. It was following him. Hmm. No, no, moon, said Owl. It is kind of you to light my way. But you must stay up over the sea where you look so fine. Owl walked on a little farther. He looked at the sky again. There was the moon coming right along with him. Pause. Is the moon really following Owl? No, of course not. Have you guys ever been walking along at night or even driving at nighttime and you look up and it looks like the moon is always overhead? Right? It always looks kind of like the moon and the sun is following you, but it's not. It's just high up in the sky, right? But Owl doesn't seem to know that. He thinks that the moon is following him everywhere he goes. Interesting. Let's keep reading. Dear moon, said Owl, you really must not come home with me. My house is small. You would not fit through the door, and I have nothing to give you for supper. Owl kept on walking. The moon sailed after him over the tops of the trees. Moon, said Owl, I think that you do not hear me. Owl climbed to the top of a hill. He shouted as loudly as he could, Goodbye, moon. The moon went behind some clouds. Owl looked and looked. The moon was gone. It is always a little sad to say goodbye to a friend said Owl. Owl came home. He put on his pajamas and went to bed. The room was very dark. Owl was still feeling sad. All at once, Owl's bedroom was filled with silver light. Owl looked out of the window. The moon was coming from behind the clouds. Moon, you have followed me all the way home. What a good round friend you are, said Owl. Then Owl put his head on the pillow and closed his eyes. The moon was shining down through the window. Owl did not feel sad at all. The end. Kipsters, I love that story so much. It's so funny that Owl thinks that the moon is following him around and he goes through a lot of different feelings throughout that chapter. He does not feel the same way from the beginning of the chapter to the end of the chapter. So now it's gonna be our job to take a look at what Owl is, thinks, what he says, what he does on different pages to figure out how he is feeling. Okay, I'm gonna go back in the book and reread a page, and then I'm gonna ask you, what did Owl think on that page? What did he say, and what did he do? Mm, okay. Owl kept on walking. The moon sailed after him over the tops of the trees. Moon, said Owl, I think that you do not hear me. Owl climbed to the top of a hill. He shouted as loudly as he could, Goodbye, Moon. Hmm. What does Owl think on this page? What does Owl think on this page? Go ahead and call it out. Three, two, one. Yeah, I heard some really good ideas. One, he thinks that the moon is following him. That's what he's thinking on this page. He's thinking that the moon is following him. And two, it says, I think that you do not hear me. So Owl thinks that the moon's following him. He thinks he's calling out to the moon and the moon's just not hearing him, right? Because he's telling the moon, go away, stop following me. And the moon's still following him. Okay, nice job. What does Owl say on this page? What does he say on this page? Get ready. Three, two, one. Nice job, right? We can look at these little quotation marks. That tells us that a character is speaking. So Owl says, goodbye, moon. He also says up here, moon, I think that you do not hear me. So these little quotation marks are letting us know that the character is saying something. Nice job. And what does Owl do on this page? What does he do? Get ready to call it out. Three, two, one. Yeah, I heard a lot of really good answers. What really stood out to me 
was that he shouted as loudly as he could. He shouted, he climbed on the top of a hill so that he could get closer to the moon and then shouts as loudly as he can, goodbye moon, right? So when we put all of those clues together, Kipsters, how is Owl feeling? How is Owl feeling? Get ready to call it out. Three, two, one. Nice, I heard some good answers. What I was thinking is that Owl's feeling angry, he's feeling frustrated. He's feeling angry, he's feeling frustrated. He wants the moon to leave him alone, but the moon is still up there following him. He's shouting, he's telling the moon goodbye. He's thinking the moon is still following him and not really hearing him. He's getting pretty frustrated, right? He's growing more and more frustrated as this goes on, that the moon is still following him. I want you to make your most frustrated face at me right now. <laughs> There's some good frustrated faces. Oh my goodness. Mine wasn't that good. Yours were, yours were much better. Those were good frustrated faces. Nice job, Gipsters. Okay, um, let's try it out on one more page. Remember, we're looking for what Owl thinks, does, and says. The moon went behind some clouds. Owl looked and looked. The moon was gone. It is always a little sad to say goodbye to a friend, said Owl. Owl came home. He put on his pajamas and went to bed. The room was very dark. What does Owl think on this page? What is he thinking? Call it out in three, two, one. I heard some good ideas. He's thinking though that the moon is gone. The moon stopped following him and went home, right? What really happened? The moon went behind some clouds. But Owl's thinking that the moon's gone forever. What does he say on this page? Go ahead, remember we're looking for those quotation marks. What does he say on this page? Go ahead, call it out. Three, two, one. Nice job. He says, it is always a little sad to say goodbye to a friend. Hmm. And what does he do? What does he do? Call it out. Three, two, one. Now he walks home and goes to bed by himself. So put all of this together, Kipsters. How does Owl feel? Call it out. Three, two, one. I heard a lot of Kipsters say that he's feeling sad, and I agree he's feeling sad, but I think we can come up with an even better word than sad for how he feels. Think about an even better word for sad. Something more specific. Get ready to call it out. Three, two, one. Ooh, I heard much better answers that time. The one I was thinking of was lonely, right? He misses his friend. He realizes that the moon was his friend and his partner through his walk home, and now the moon's gone. He misses him, so he's lonely. Give me your best lonely face. Those were some good faces. I'm taking a, taking a picture of your lonely faces right now because they're just so good. Okay, really nice job, Kipsters, figuring out how Owl was feeling on those different pages. We looked at how he was thinking, what he was saying, and what he was doing. Your job now, Kipsters. At the end of this video, you're going to log in to Kids A to Z, Raz Kids. You're going to log in, go to one of your assigned books, anyone, pick anyone, and I want you to figure out how the main character in that book is feeling. Take a look at what the character thinks, says, and does to come up with how they're feeling at the beginning of the story. Then I want you to take that feeling and make a face that shows it. So if they're angry in the beginning, you might make a face that's like, Rrr. If they're feeling lonely, we might make our lonely face, right? Then I want you to take a picture of yourself making that feeling face and text it to your teacher, okay? All right, really nice job, Kipsters. Happy Model Monday again. I can't wait to see all of your photos. You did an excellent job growing your brain today. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.